Hi there, welcome to the video. We'll be looking at the best VS Code extensions for Flutter developers. I still have a cold, so I'm losing my voice a little bit, but hopefully you can still understand and we'll get through this video. So starting off with the first extension, we're gonna scroll to Flutter, we're gonna type in and we'll see that we have, of course, the Flutter extension. Now, if you're a Flutter developer already, this is certainly old news for you. You'll most likely have this extension. So this essentially allows us to hot reload. It allows us to run our Flutter application within VS Code. It allows us to refactor, add new sort of widgets really easily and so on. It's a perfect extension. I would absolutely recommend downloading this. It also goes hand in hand with Dart and the Dart language support and debugger is another necessity for any Flutter developer. I'm gonna skip through these two because I'm gonna imagine you already have these if you're a Flutter developer. We're gonna look now at something called Bracket Colorizer 2. So if we look down at Bracket Colorizer, you can see that not only do we have this sort of line which dictates where we are currently, where our cursor is at this point, but also the colors of our brackets are actually different too. So you'll see we have this blue bracket and that matches the set state bracket right there. If we select this pink bracket, we can see that matches that sort of opening brace here for increment counter. We can also select things like app bar at center. And you can see that each time I make a new selection, it of course draws a line between the two brackets. So I find this to be quite useful, especially when we have a larger widget tree and sometimes things can get out of hand quite quickly. So with something like bracket colorizer and the plugin itself uh, for Flutter, where you can see this app bar here, you, you have sort of two things which help you in uh, understanding the widget tree. Next up, I wanna bring your attention to awesome Flutter snippets. If we type that in, we should be able to see it right here. So this is a selection of awesome Flutter snippets that you can see. And essentially you can just go down, look at the different shortcuts. Some of them you may find useful. And of course you can add inside of your application. Essentially it just speeds up development and stops you having to write boilerplate yourself. Another one I wanna bring your attention to is PubSpec Assist. If we take a look at this and then we click PubSpec Assist right here, we can see that the essentially the GIF will show us right here that it gives us the ability to add dependencies to our Dart and Flutter projects. So obviously we can type that in ourselves if we want, but it gives us the version number. It gives us a sort of autocomplete. And if we just look at our PubSpec and we see right here, we could say something like PubSpec add dependency. And if we said something like cloud underscore Firestore and hit enter, it should give us the options for Cloud Firestore. We'll select the first one. It'll then go ahead and add Cloud Firestore with the appropriate version and number. So there's probably many times where you want to add a new dependency and you perhaps don't know the version number off by heart. So for example, you may do something like this and get the latest version, but PubSpec Assist allows you to, of course, add that dependency and have a version number. Finally, for now, I'd like to show you something called Flutter Files. So let's type that in and we should see Flutter Files. So this allows us to scaffold Flutter block templates inside of a VS Code project. So we can see right now it's scaffolding a login project, sort of a login block. It makes a new index as well, which we can right click and do. And if we just go ahead and do this ourselves, so inside of lib, we'll right click new block. We can then select login block dot dot. And we should be able to see, for example, that we have a standard block singleton right here. We then, if we want to go ahead and set new index within the library file, it will go ahead and export the login block dot dot and the main dot dot. So if we, for example, had a folder called pages and we had numerous pages, we could generate an index for that and then that will be much easier to import each page. This does rely on the block package right now, so we don't have that inside of the project, hence why we're of course getting errors. You can also select a new big pack block, and if we said something like account, just as a random example, it should go ahead and give us a larger amount of files with an account block, an account event, model, page, provider, repository, and so on. You may or may not need all of this for your project, but I think it's just worth taking a look and maybe you'll find something out of this extension that works for you. So that's for now, at least the Flutter extensions, which I found useful. I'd love to know what you think and what you found inside of the comments section below. 
Thanks a lot for watching. I hope you found these extensions useful. And until next time, I'll see you in the comments. Bye.